Hello, I'm Chris Crawford, and this is a short video on how to straighten folder blades. Put this video together for my cousin Mark to help him out, and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just post it online and share it, and maybe it'll help others out as well. All right, Mr. Uncle Cousin Mark, this is going to be a quick demonstration on how to straighten a blade. And so I got some jacked up blades that I just use for when I need to test something. So I have a flat surface you can do this on your um, on your it's like if you got a granite plate or something this is just a flat piece of steel extra piece that came with my um, grinder and so what I do is I put the blade after it's ground with the tang against there and I try the best I can to hold it right on the pivot just like that and then I take my little steel ruler and I have no idea if this you'll be able to see this but I can see right there um, I'm Pretty much the tip goes to that very first little uh, mark. I don't know if you can see that. And I flip it over and I see, okay, now the tip flipped over goes to about that second mark. So I know that the, the blade is, has been ground off center and I need to bring the tip down a little bit. All right, so what I do is keeping in mind the orientation where I need to pull it, I put it in my vise all the way to my tang right there and this is my so-called jig it's basically just a little piece of wood I slide it on the bandsaw put some tape around it just to kind of reinforce it slide it over like that all the way down and then I just give it just a little pull I usually hold it down here just kind of do it like that check it and I may have pulled it I actually pulled that pretty hard so I may have pulled it too much. Yeah, I mean, look how look how far that comes off now. So I pulled it way too much in the other direction. Keep in mind when it's annealed, you know, it, it doesn't take much to, to pull it down. Actually, I want to get that all the way down even because I don't, don't want to bend my tang. My goal here is just basically to work it until I get my blade to lay center prior to heat treating. Now it would be better, all right, look, I'm about one and a half right there. So it should be about right, yeah, about one and a half right there. So um, the tip is centered now. You know, ideally you wanna grind your blades centered, but in the event that they don't come out centered, you can do that. And at least what it does is by by forming this whole part of the blade, you're not you're not just kind of bending your blade, and that's why I would stay away from the um, arbor press because you don't want to put a bow in your blade. Basically, by doing this, we're we're pulling it from uh, this area down here. Now, when you heat treat, it may warp and heat treat, and it may go back to the way it was. After you heat treat, you have a very very limited amount of time to make an adjustment to it. So I don't know the metallurgy, you know, what all is going on with it. But anyway, you, 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 so you heat treat it, quench it, and pull it out. And if it's, you know, while it's still good and warm, check it. Now what you're going to do is when you get ready to check it after you heat treat, you're going to have a lot of scale that's going to throw this stuff off. So pull it out of heat treat real quick. I mean, you want, to, you want it to cool off. You don't want to just like go in and come out. You want it to, to, to quench and you know, still be warm, you know, pick it up. You still want to do it while it's warm. Take your sandpaper, sand your tang so that it's, you know, flat on both sides so you get your scale off and you got to work quick. Then test it. Okay. So check both sides. If it's centered, great. If it's not, come back over here, stick it in there, work fast. You're going to have to pull a little bit further or a little bit harder because it's hardened but don't pull too much, just do it a little, check it, do it a little, check it, do a little, check it. I don't know, working quickly, I tried to do it no more than about three times. Um, here is a knife that I broke doing that, trying to straighten it. So it doesn't happen often, but uh, it will happen, and especially if you're kind of new to, to doing this, it's it could happen. All right, so that's, that's the way I straighten my blades uh, after, you know, before heat treating and after heat treating. Now, what happens after that, once it's, you know, you gone past that 30 seconds, minute, whatever it is that you can work with it, 
Here's an example of a blade. And I did not even check this one to see if it is centered. Oh, it doesn't look like it is how high that tip comes. So let's see, that's going, it's going all the way up to the second on that side. There we go. Ah. Okay, so this, this one is, is bad off centered. So what I want to do on this one, grab something. I tried this method last night and I think it works. I haven't put the knife back into the, the blade back into the knife to see, but you see how I have a very little gap right there. Got a good get, bit of gap over here. If you can see that or not. Anyway, I'm gonna clamp this blade. I have just a piece of quarter inch steel here. I picked up a little bar of this over at uh, Lowe's. So I'm gonna clamp it to it like that. And you see, even though it's hard and I've got some, some give in there. Now, the first thing I tried to do last night was I tried to put a shim under it, like how far down I wanted it, and then clamped it down to that shim so that it would be centered. But when I did that, after it came out of tempering again, this is like after it's been tempered once, I mean, after I finished tempering, I'm getting ready to put it in the blade and check it again. Um, that didn't seem to work. It can't kind of spring back. So the next time, what I did was I clamped it all the way down to the blade. Now you think if you clamp it all the way down to the blade and it gets, uh, you know, readjusted down there, that's going to be leaning too far to that side. But when I unclamped it, it, it rose back up, but I don't think it rose up as far. So I just have a little piece of shim stock, something to protect the blade. If you've not hand sanded the blade, I wouldn't worry about it. I just put the clamp on it. But the, the blade I was working on last night, I took out of one of those autos to see if I could adjust it. And I didn't want to mess up the finish. So I put that on there like that, put the clamp on, tighten the clamp down to secure my blade all the way down like that. Then I put it in the oven and tempered it for two hours at 400 degrees. And I think I think it came out all right. In fact, let's just look here. So this is the one that I took out of a auto and I already kind of sanded this. That's why it's a different color right there. But when I put it on here and check it, I'm at about mark one and a half right there. And I'm at mark one and a half right there. So it, it looks like it's worked. And like I said, I pulled this all the way down you know, to the, to the block opposite side of where it needed to go or, or the, or the direction it needed to go. And I really think I can put this knife, this blade back into that auto and the auto that I had that I didn't think I could sell. I think it's, I think I'll be able to, and actually I may be able to do it with both of them because both knives had the same problem. So, uh, those are a few things. I'm still experimenting with this to see if it works, but using the little jig and straightening the blade prior to heat treating because of poor grinding, and then also straightening immediately after heat treating due to uh, heat treat warpage. Uh, this has seemed to work pretty good in the past and it's really helped me to make more of my blades to center up uh, in the knife. So hopefully that'll help.